In this video, you're going to get a chance to go through some JavaScript practice exercises for beginners, and then we'll go through the solutions together. Hi, this is James from Junior Developer Central and welcome to this JavaScript practice exercises session where I'll present you with a JavaScript coding exercise problem, then give you a chance to actually have a go at it, and then finally work through a possible solution for each exercise. If you have a second, don't forget to subscribe to support the channel below and for any future videos and tutorials. So let's make a start with exercise one. So a lot of these exercises are based around string handling and string manipulation. And this first exercise is basically asking you to take the first three characters and the last three characters of a string, and then basically adding them together. As long as the string is actually three or more characters, if not, we'll just return the original string. So it's probably a good idea to put this into a function. So go ahead and pause the video now and come back in a few moments when you've had a go at that and we'll work through a solution together. Okay, so I hope you got on okay with that. Let's uh, start off by making our function to start with. So I'm going to say uh, const and we'll say make new string uh, for our function name. And I'm going to use an arrow function here as well. So our function needs to take one argument and I'm just going to call that str short for string, which will be the initial string that gets passed into the function. And the first thing I'm going to do is put a check in to say, is the string length less than three? Because if it is, we just want to return the initial string. So what I'm actually going to do is I'll put this on a separate line just to make it a bit clearer. But I'm going to use a ternary operator here. So we can say if the string length is less than three, let's do something. We actually want to return the original string as the exercise describes. But if not, we can return the first three characters and the last three characters of the string. So the slice function is going to be our friend here. So I'm just going to say for the string, uh, let's slice it at position zero. And as you can see from the documentation for slice, we can actually put in an end number as well. So when to stop slicing that string. And because we only want three characters, I'm going to pass the value of three into there. So that would actually give us the first three characters of the string. Now to get the last three characters, um, there's a little trick that we can do with slice. So if we say string.slice, and then say minus three, that will actually go backwards from the end of the string and get the last three characters for us. So let's try that out with a few examples. So there you can see by calling the make new string function a few different times, we're getting back the first three characters and the last three characters each time, uh, except for the last one where we've only passed in a two character string and it's just returned that straight back to us. And the first example with passing in ABC is quite interesting because we're actually using the first three characters and the last three characters are the same. So we get ABC repeated twice. And of course, the second one is just returning the whole string again because this string is six characters long. So that's how I'd approach exercise one using slice and using that little trick where you can just pass in a negative value to get the last three characters of a string. So let's move on to exercise two. So in this exercise, you need to write a program or a function to extract the first half of a string, given that it's an even length. So go ahead and pause the video and I'll see you in a moment when you've had a go at that. Okay, so this exercise is super simple and hopefully it didn't confuse you too much. Uh, I'm going to make a, another function and call it first half to solve this one. And again, it's going to be an arrow function that has the str argument passed in, uh, which is our base string. And all we need to do is call uh, our slice function again to actually get a portion of the string. And how much do we actually need? Well, we need to start at the very start of the string. So we'll put pass in zero as the start value. So for the end value, we just want to pass in half of the value of the string length. So we can say str.length and just divide that by two. And if we try that with a couple of examples, Okay, so you can see if we, can, if we pass in some even length strings like temp and temple, uh, we get the portion, half of the portion of the string, the first half, which is exactly what we need. Uh, but you also notice if you pass in an odd numbered string like temples, which is seven characters long, um, because the string dot length divided by two just gets rounded to a whole number, we still get half of the string back or, or at least the first three characters of the string because we can't split temples, a uh, seven character string right down the middle. So hopefully you found that nice and simple, and let's move on to exercise three. 
So with exercise three, we simply have to add two strings together, uh, but the caveat is that we need to remove or at least skip the first character of each string. So have a think about how you're going to skip that first character. It should be fairly easy to add the two strings together and go and have a go at this one and I'll see you in a few moments. Okay, so let's go through a solution for this exercise. So I'm going to create a function and I'll just call this one concatenate. And I'm going to pass in two variables uh, or two arguments into the function. So I'll say string one and string two. Helps if you call them something different. And there are a couple of more complicated ways that you could skip that first character from each of those strings. We could split the strings into an array and then uh, remove the first uh, item from each of those arrays. Um, but there's an even simpler way, and you'd guessed it, it's using slice uh, yet again. So what I'm going to do is return string one uh, dot slice and just remove the first character by passing in the start value of one. So because the uh, string would be zero indexed, zero would be the first character. So by passing in one, we're actually skipping that first item. And I'll do string slice one as well. So there you have it, really super simple. Uh, I'll just go through some examples, check that's working. And there you have it, you can see that the two strings are being added together, but with the first characters removed. So let's move on to exercise four. So this exercise is to do with numbers and it's a little bit different from what we've been looking at so far. Um, basically you need to write a function to find out which number is nearest to 100 from uh, two values that are passed into it. So if you imagine you've got two arguments A and B passed in, which one is closest to the number 100 and actually return that number from the function. So have a quick go at that one and I'll see you in a moment to go through another solution. Okay, so this one requires a bit of thought and it could be done with some if statements, but uh, there is a one-liner solution which would be quite elegant for this. Uh, so let's create a function and we'll call it uh, closest to 100. And we're gonna take in two values and I'll just call them A and B. And then in our arrow function, we need to work out what the difference is between A and B and, and how, much, how far away they are from 100. So the easiest way to do that is to say 100 minus A and 100 minus B. So that will actually tell us how far away A and B are actually from 100. And if we say, is A, uh, when it's been taken away from 100 at least, is that smaller than B? And if it is, then we know that number is closest to 100 because it's, it's a smaller value. So we can pass back A from a ternary operator, and if not, we can pass back B. So let's have a few examples, see if that's working. So there you go, you can see that 99 is closer to 100 than 1, and also 51 is closest to 100. And because 50 and 50 are exactly the same, we just return, it'll probably be A that gets returned first because it will meet the condition sooner. But I just put that in there just to check that the function doesn't explode when we put in a equal value. And I did notice I spelt closest wrong, so I went back and corrected that too. So again, as I said at the start, this is probably something you could do with an if statement as well, but again, there's an elegant one-line solution for it, which is still reasonably easy to read. So let's have a look at our final exercise, exercise number five. So in exercise number five, you need to write a program that basically checks a string to see if it has got either two, three, or four occurrences of a spe specified character. So for example, uh, if we wrote a function and passed in the letter O, we would need to check this other string that we passed in if it had between two and four occurrences of O within the actual string. So we're basically counting a character in a string and to see if it matches between two and four. So have a go at this final exercise and I'll see you in a moment for a possible solution. Okay, so the way to approach this, or the way I would approach it, is to first of all create a helper function, a convenience function, that counts the amount of characters in a particular string for a specific character that you specify. So let's create that first. Let's create a function called uh, count chars, for example. And I'm going to pass in a base string, and that's the string that we're checking for. And char is the actual character to see how many times that actually occurs within the base string. 
So the first thing I'm going to do is split the string into an array. And because we have it now in array, we can perform array-like functions on it. And the one I am quite interested in is filter. So what this will actually do is it will filter out any items in the array that don't match a particular condition. So the condition I'm going to pass in is a function. So you have to pass in a callback to the filter function, which is basically an arrow function, uh, which has one parameter, which I'll just call ch. It doesn't, can be called anything really. And I'll just say does ch, so this is the item in the array, does that equal the char that's been passed in in the in the parent function above. So if this does match, then it will keep it in the array, otherwise it will drop it and it will be removed from the array itself. So with that in mind, what we have here at the moment will just return back an array of characters split from the string that only match the char uh, argument that we passed into the parent function. So if we actually extend that just by saying we want the length of that array, this actually tells us how many characters uh, as specified by char are in the base str string that was passed into the count chars function. So now that that count chars helper function is defined, I'm going to create the function that will solve the exercise for us. So I'll create a new function and say const uh, contains two to four, for example. And we want to pass in uh, an initial base string and also the character that we were checking for. And in this function, we're going to say does count chars, and we'll pass the string and character that we're looking up to that function. Uh, so that will return our length value as above. So we'll say is that bigger or equal to two? And is the count chars function with the string and the char again, is that less? less than or equal to four. So this should give us a, a true or false value back uh, saying does the string contain between two and four occurrences of the carriage that we pass in. So let's write some examples to see if that actually works. So when we run those examples, you can see the first one goes back true because there's two O's. Uh, the second one gives us false because there's only one O and so on. You can see that the last one, because it's got lots of O's in it, gives us false again because we've exceeded that limit of four. So that's probably the simplest way to approach this. If we knew all of the characters were occurring one after the other, we could maybe have used a regular expression to check for the match in the string. But because we don't know when they're going to occur, using the filter is quite an elegant way to find out the number of chars that are in the string. And then we can just write a, a function on top of that to actually check whether that value is in a particular range. So that's all the exercises for this video. I hope you've learned something and managed to get some good coding practice from this. Just before you go, don't forget to subscribe to support the channel below and for any future tutorial and video updates. 